Hi, I'm Adele and you're watching Spinner.com. I met Rick when I did SNL. Well, I didn't know it was going to be, have such an impact on my career, SNL, and that from then it was where sort of everything went up. I was already nervous enough because it was SNL, and then Sarah Palin was there, and then Josh Brolin, and I'm the biggest Goonies fan, so I was already a bit starstruck by that. And then Rick works for Columbia, my label, West Coast, and um, when I was performing Chasing Pavements, I could just see Rick Rubin sort of bobbing his head along to the beat. Um, and then I met him there and he was lovely. And then I met him at the Music Cares dinner a couple of nights before the Grammys in 2009. And I was by far the worst that night. I had a tampon on my finger because I'd pulled off my ghetto nail and I had to put it on there so that I knew I had a bad finger. And I had a coat on because I was so nervous. I just wanted to go home afterwards. Um, but Rick said it was best, but it wasn't. It was totally the worst, but we just bonded. And then when I won the uh, Best New Artist Grammy, he said, um, let's, let's try and win an album, Mum. Not sure that will win, but it was still, you know, amazing work. The band he put together were insane, like Chris Dave and James Poyser, and like, it was just amazing, the band that he put together. It was a lot of fun. There's a guy called Liam Bailey, he's from Nottingham in the UK. Um, he's, he's pretty amazing, he just looks great and he sounds great and he's just really lush. But I've kind of moved on to sort of folky country. Not moved on, it's just that there's nothing new, you know, like, nothing that I've heard anyway that grabs me. Uh, although I do actually love Melanie Fiona. Uh, got into artists who are quite, you know, old school, like Alison Krauss and Wanda Jackson and a British band called Elbow, um, Sugarland, Lady Antebellum. Kind of got more into that because I was touring so much. Um, and like my last tour was kind of like Austin and Houston and stuff like that. And my bus driver, B Haley. And made me loads of compilations and I just kind of really got into it. But I mean, I still love like Jill Scott and Erica Badu and Andy Stone and Etta James and stuff, but apart from Melanie Fiona and Janelle Monet, actually, I adore her. The last record was, didn't sound like a 20, well, I was 19 at the time, it didn't sound like a you know, 19, 20 year old. And, um, and I'm nowhere, in real life, I'm nowhere near as serious as my first album, the songs were, you know, I'm playful and I'm fun. Well, I like to think I'm fun anyway. Um, and I wanted this record to kind of portray that a bit, a bit more and be a bit more tongue in cheek and a bit more attitude and not have someone saying I'm wise beyond my years because I know it's a compliment, but it pisses me off a little bit when people say that because it makes me think I'm a crooner. I wanted to progress with my, with, with my sound as well, but it was also really important to me that I kept the kind of sparse, stripped back, minimal thing sound that the first record had as well, which there is. Um, I'm playing a lot less guitar on it just because I love piano more. The record's called 21. I was going to call it Rolling in the Deep after the single because I just love the phrase, but it's a bit like chasing pavements. It's not, you can't really roll in the deep really. And also the number thing, it's universal and it's not a language. I mean, it's numbers and I quite like it and it's quite a nice way to sort of catalogue my experience, if anyone but myself is interested in it. And also 21 is a very poignant age, do you know what I mean? Especially here, but in England, it's sort of like, I mean, you can do anything you want from 16 in England, but it's still quite a big deal. You're like a fully fledged adult. But 21 will be the last age number for the album. Yeah.